My name is Peter Jackson. I've been a sports journalist all my life, goodness, 50 years and, and still counting, during which time I've met more than my share of chances and charlatans, the great and the good, heroes and heroines. And every so often you meet somebody who stands out from the crowd. And that was my first memory of Raymond William Gravel. Um, Wales played France in a B international round about October 1974 and I went along with the match with a fairly open mind and I saw for the first time this kind of warrior-like figure with the beard. Beards weren't at all fashionable in those days playing in the centre for Wales B and he had a pretty good game and I thought well I've I've got to try and find out a little bit about uh, about the uh, person in the jersey. I introduced myself to him and um, uh, I, I sort of made the mistake in hindsight of saying I thought you played well uh, he said did you did you really he said you thought I played well and and throughout the interview which must have lasted about half an hour he was constantly seeking reassurance that you know, I said look Ray I'm not a national selector I'm not saying I'm an expert but I thought you played very well you, you really mean that do you and of course I didn't know how insecure he was but that kind of went on and once we got off the the fact did I play well uh, onto his what he did for a living he was an electricity board linesman in those days and uh, the following January he'd been picked for one of the more famous Welsh matches and he made his test debut against France at the Parc de France in January 1975. Now this was a famous game because there were from memory six new caps. You send a team with six new caps to France, you're not exactly sort of overflowing with optimism. Ray went there and I'd love to have been a fly on the wall in the Wales dressing room because a friend of mine subsequently told me, he said, if you'd been there, you'd have looked around at us and you'd have thought, these people are in no fit state to represent their country. And I said, well, why was that? He said, well, the worst case of all was the brand new number 13, Planetly in Wales, Ray Gravel, who was sitting in the corner in floods of tears. And somebody came along and said, Grav, you know, nerves affect people in lots of ways. He said, don't worry. No, 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 no. He said, look, look. And he showed him a telegram. And he did telegram which was signed Mam and Toodles. Toodles was the cat. So Ray, who was emotional, even, you know, at, 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 at the most surprising of times, now it was all flooding out of him. However, he managed to pull himself together and um, they were standing in the, uh, the corridor, the two teams, waiting to go out together. Again, only France did that in those days. They do it now all the time, but it was unusual. So Ray was standing there and he looked round at the nearest Frenchman and sort of gave him what he thought was a playful tap. And the, 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 the Frenchman would lo, loco, loco, pay the girl, loco. And of course, Wales went out and they won that game by, by a boulevard, 25-10. And that was how I, I got to know Ray. Uh, and you meet many players and you chat to them and they move on and you move on. But, but we retained a friendship that, that lasted f for the rest of his life. And he said to me, he said, Peter, you ring me any time you want, but never, ever ring me on a Monday night. I said, why is that, Grav? He said, the Sweeney's on on a Monday night. Now, for the benefit of younger viewers, the Sweeney was a highly successful police documentary that went out uh, on, on BBC. No, I'm not sure it was BBC, but it went out uh, on a Monday night anyway. Uh, and, and then in... in in later life, as, as Ray's broadcasting career took off, uh, then, of course, he, um, he found a role in acting. I mean, you know, not any old film, but Damage, starring Jeremy Irons, Miranda Richardson, produced by the great uh, Frenchman uh, Louis Mal. And, um, and, and Ray had more than a walk-on part in that, and he was, he, 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 he was sort of fiercely proud of that. So here was a man who was an international rugby player, broadcaster, actor. He was a man of, of, of so many, many parts and a man who always saw the best in people. And if he'd done something wrong, Ray would be genuinely hurt. Now, in the 1980 uh, Lions Tour of South Africa, back in the days when the South Africans supplied their own referees, referees 
were interested in enforcing the laws, but not Law 10 on violent conduct. So you had carte blanche to do what you want. And um, Ray had been told by the Lions that, look, you know, that number 12, he's, he's going to give us a lot of trouble unless you impose yourself fairly hard. And Ray took that as a license just about to create grievous bodily harm. And uh, he hit this guy late. And, and even the referee had to stop uh, and acknowledge that. And he had a word with Bill Beaumont, who was the Lions captain. And he said, look, Mr. Beaumont, you're number 13. If, if he does that again, you know, we can't have that. Have a word with him, will you? You know, can't have late tackles. So Bill went, he said, Ray, he's not very happy that you uh, tackled that guy late, you know, a bit of a wink and a nod. And Ray said, Bill, I got there as early as I could. <laughs> so he went on hitting his late tackles and then saying, well, no, it was actually early, you know. And, uh, and, 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 and that was how he... Um, he got away with him. But no, he was a wonderful, wonderful guy. And he had, um, because he was brought up in Mun of the Garrig, he had a great sort of mistrust of uh, England and all things English. And I said, Grav, well, you know, I, I spend a fair bit of time in London and I find the English pretty decent people. There's, you know, good and bad in all nationalities. You, you, you can't generalise. Ah, oh, no, easy for you to say. And then some years later, he said, you were right about the English. He said, Men of Oak, Fran Cotton. He said, Bill Beaumont. Roger Rutley, oh, lifelong friends. And of course, his last tour in 1980 was, he was rooming with P another Englishman, Peter Wheeler. And the last test match was in Cape Town. It was the end of the tour. They'd all had a bit of a night on the lash. Ray was probably out longer than usual. He came back in. And of course, he could never sleep. He wanted constant reassurance and everything. So he woke Wheeler up and, how do you think I played today, Peter? Yeah, oh, grave not. I told you you were okay. And so Wheeler eventually abandoned all hope of getting to sleep. It was about four o'clock in the morning. And then Ray said, there's some, Peter, there's, there's, something's burning. And he said, no, don't worry about it, Ray. And so Ray tried to nod off. And he said, no, no. He said, there's something burning. It's, 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 it's coming from the bathroom. Yeah, he said, uh, Wheeler, he said, don't worry about it, Ray. It's just your your uh, T-shirts. I, I burnt a couple of your T-shirts. Good God, I like Peter. You, we're friends. Why have you done that? He said, well, you burn our second homes. So he thought I'd just have a little bit of my own back. But Ray Gavell, I mean, it's to, to me, it's a privilege to be able to talk about him. Uh, wonderful, wonderful character. Words cannot possibly, my words can't possibly do him justice. I, I, I just find it incredibly hard to believe that it's more than seven years since we lost him because you think of Ray, indestructible, an all England doer in boots, if you like, and you think this man will, will live forever. But he's, he's left us with such wonderful memories. And I wish Gareth Bale well. I, I met Gareth last February. He rang me up. He said, it's Gareth Bale here. I'm doing a one-man show on... Ray Gravel and I said, don't Real Madrid pay you enough these days? And <laughs> he then explained, <laughs> explain, same name, but, but, but uh, different, different occupations. So I hope it's a resounding success. Ray deserves nothing less.